Hi everyone in cloud computing and welcome to episode 55 of the cloud computing training show featured on YouTube and podcast with Brad Nelson and internationally recognized and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show we will be talking about cloud computing has grown faster than expected with virtual environments existing alongside container driven microservices and serverless computing frameworks. In 2018, quite a few enterprises moved partly to cloud native architectures. Many others are eager to shift, but are hampered by a skills gap. Hi, Dave. It's great to have you on the training show this week. Happy 2019. Boy, that was a lot of technology in a paragraph. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, so look, an opening question then, I guess, is uh, will multi-cloud define cloud training for 2019 then? Yeah, I think it will. And uh, where do you get multi-cloud training? Because ultimately, you know, they'll give you tactical training around Amazon Web Services and Google and Microsoft, and you can become an architect and a developer, and you can specialize in uh, cloud-native databases like Amazon's DynamoDB, and you know, the list goes on. You can get all these various skills, but what what really kind of frames out a uh, multi-cloud architecture path? for you if you're looking to be a trainer. Well, ultimately that means you have a lot of skills around a lot of stuff and you understand how things work and play well together. You know about management operations, security, things like that, also a little bit of that. And we just define nobody who exists out there, you know, besides, uh, you know, probably 10 people in the world. And so as these businesses go out there and they start looking for people with multi-cloud skills, they have to get to a um, you know, in essence, uh, a many skilled person, which has the ability to kind of learn on the fly and someone who's able to deal with operational training and understands the specialized tooling out there and really kind of is not hindered by a particular niche knowledge in the space. And so as people are hiring out there, they're finding the fact that these people just don't exist. And so we may be able to create them with people who have some Amazon skills, Microsoft skills, operational skills, you know, things like that. But ultimately, you have to have the ability and kind of the fire in the belly to go off there and learn many things about whatever domain you're looking to manage, whatever clouds and technology you're looking to leverage, and also understand holistically you know, how these things kind of work and play well together. And I think it's ultimately, everybody's looking for those people. I'm not sure many of them exist if, in, if you know, at all in, in most of the markets. So what are they to do? And well, it's again, the ability to react and train your people, figure out what a multi-cloud um, architecture is, figure out what piece parts you're using and get them trained and moving in the right directions from a company point of view for existing people, but also people who are managing their own career, understand where to get that information online, where to use it, how to understand it, how to fit it together. Do you want, do you under, do you take training that's at the um, detail level or tactical level and build that up into a larger architectural understanding or to go from a larger architectural understanding down to the detail level? And so all those questions are being bantered about. And I do think that we're gonna have a lot of companies that are gonna be asking for multi-cloud skill sets, and they can't define what the heck those things are. Yeah, look, absolutely right. You've touched on some you know, fantastic points there. Uh, I just wanted to, one of them I thought was really cool. All of them are pretty cool. But uh, one particular is the optimal core strengths of the business are gonna drive the need for a multi-cloud. Uh, and and you, you know, we've covered this on the show before where we're looking at, you know, various different cloud providers and organizations embracing very different you know, cloud providers and why are they doing that? And, and really where are the internal core strengths of the business already and playing to those strengths and developing those skills that you know, if you do need to you know, have some sort of multi-cloud, play to the strengths you've got existingly and not to spread yourself too thinly with you know, trying to recruit people coming in um, that you, you have no idea of how to manage or how to train or anything like that because you're, you're always going to you know, potentially waste thousands on, on a pointless recruitment process when if you haven't identified the, the core strengths of the business already, right? Yeah, that's right. And I think that, um, you know, it's very much like the early days of cloud. You know, people were out there trying to hire cloud people and no idea what that means. Uh, now that they understand what that means, we're dealing with um, more complex architectures 
and what are those architectures and what does that mean to the business and you know what kind of core skill sets should be there and again i'd urge people to hire people and become a trainer in terms of the you know, the autodidact someone who's able to self learn um, because unless they're able to self learn they they just have no chance of keeping up the the man that you have you know, training time and they're down for training 25, 30% of the time, they're just not going to be as productive. And so those are, you know, um, very good people to find out there. And if you do, they'll allow you to scale. Um, but also they really kind of demand the top dollar. They're very good at, um, you know, where their careers are going, but they're also very good at finding the information and keeping up. And so they've adjusted their, um, you know, ability to absorb new skills, things like that, with kind of a mix of on-the-job training and, you know, different courses out there, different ways in which they read, they can typically learn fairly quickly. And if you're not that person, I would urge you to become that person just because you're going to, you're going to um, um, command a larger salary, you're going to be able to um, do things very quickly, you're going to become less frustrated with the emergence of technology, things like that. Um, so it's going to be a bit of, uh, probably for the next two, three years, you know, a bit of ad hoc training that people are going to, you know, practice and they're going to get the skills that they need as they need it, you know, basically just in time training. Uh, they're going to do so within a couple of days, not a couple of weeks or a couple of months. They're going to do so via videos and, you know, on demand training and, you know, computer, act, uh, and computer, um, uh, interaction training, things like that, you know, versus reading books. Uh, so it's going to change fairly quickly. Yeah, and, and I think you're right. The autodidact people are really just going to be lapping this up because this really is a uh, an opportunity for them to, to be, uh, you know, embracing the change and, and the learning curve. And I think that's it's really uh, it, it's really key, isn't it? Like you say, if you're not already programmed that way, you know, reprogram yourself. <laughs> get get with the program, uh, and make sure that you're you're going to be keeping up with that kind of movement. I'm a, a big believer in that. Yeah, people who have you know, I'm kind of a professional ADD are going to be in demand out there. I mean, you know, when I first got into the computer industry, you know, I started to become a programmer, but. I used to get bored with stuff fairly quickly and then move on to other things. I learned Java and then I, you know, sorry, learned C++ and I jumped to Java, then I jumped to Python. And I really didn't stop to become a deep expert in any one ones of the technology. But of course, after you understand databases and programming languages and different tools and technology, and you've had an exposure to a number of these things, you kind of learn how to logically fit them together in your mind, you become kind of an architect by default. And I think that we need more people like that. But it sounds, you know, kind of counterintuitive. We're, so what we're saying is don't become an expert in anything. Become, uh, you know, very knowledgeable, lots of things, you know, as we kind of move things forward. And those are the people we're looking at. We can hire the tactical experts, the people who understand how to deal with DynamoDB databases and deal with, you know, Python on on AWS and Linux operations in AWS and the details we can get, but the people who understand how all this stuff fits together and able to make kind of the core calls and the core decisions are gonna be you know, uh, hugely in demand. And I think what we're gonna see also, since they can't find the people with the skill sets to understand how all these things fit together, we're gonna see a number of mistakes that are occurring. Um, people are picking the wrong clouds, you know, picking the wrong security systems, um, because they don't have the kind of holistic understanding of how this stuff kind of fits together. You get the, you know, people who are, um, you know, hype driven and, and kind of have an emotional bias toward particular technologies that end up picking whatever technology they like, but, it can, but in many cases it's going to be the wrong technology. All that kind of silliness is going to occur over the next couple of years because we don't have the agents within the organizations who are able to make the right calls. Yeah, hundred percent. I haven't said that for a while, have I? Hundred percent. Uh, but no, it's a, uh, and, and you're right because it's a reflection on the um, the understanding the C levels have to to the implementation of exactly the direction of of why they need a certain platform, why they need a certain staffing to run it. And I think that's that's key. It sort of always rolls back to the C level management on their decisions as to what they're doing that's going to impact the business, not only from a, a training point of view, but also from a retention point of view as well of existing staff. And I think that's uh, that's really key. And, and I think there was um, a survey that came out. OpsRamp did a, a survey of the the, the most um, uh, was it sort of most skills that are, that are high in demand at the moment. 
Um, and it comes into the ones that we're not actually, we're not actually looking at these and thinking, oh, well, well there, there's really any surprises there. But then when you put them in a multi-cloud uh, environment, it's, it's a bit more of a, um, pardon the French, but a, a bit of a mindfuck because there's just so much you know, to it when you look at a multi-cloud environment. I mean, individually, we look at them and think, okay, well, that suits that kind of, uh, you know, that skill set. But when you're looking at someone having, you know, a multitude of these skills, such as DevOps, cloud engineering, multi-cloud management, cloud native development skills, you know, it, all of these things in a, in a multi-cloud, like you say, it's just a complete game changer, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And one of the questions I would challenge that the uh, companies ask is, um, and certainly the C-levels ask, is what skills do multi-cloud managers don't need to understand? And the reality is there's pretty much nothing. You understand on-premise and networking and, you know, the list goes on, a little bit of everything. And so that unto itself is almost an impossible task if you start talking to somebody about, you know, having all these various skill sets. But that's kind of what it takes because they end up making decisions, not asking the right questions in meetings uh, about the network, about security, and they're gonna drop the ball on this stuff if no one has a holistic understanding how this stuff kind of fits together. So it's almost like the strategic cloud you know, provider, it's our strategic cloud um, uh, consultant or just strategic cloud officer, the ability to kind of make these calls that uh, people have a tendency not to have the capabilities of making uh, because they don't understand everything and anything about the cloud computing and some of the on-premise systems. So um, we're going to have to build these people somehow. I think a lot of them are going to kind of emerge under themselves because a lot of people are very um, clever and will kind of adjust their skill sets to what the market needs are so they can make the most amount of money. And God bless them for doing that. But at the end of the day, we're going to have to figure out what these things are, what's the certification program for this skill set, how to build this person, and how to get them in line with whatever problem they mean that they're dealing with. And I, I think it's the, the big problem to solve in 2019, 2020. Yeah, absolutely. It's almost like we're trying to find the unicorn chasing the shiny object. Um, it's, it's something, I don't know, something like that. Anyway, it moves on nicely to your top three tips there, Dave, if it'd be good enough to share. Yeah, number one, I understand that training has a shelf life. I mean, um, I think that uh, if we're taking a deep dive in any kind of technology, um, you know, probably the stuff I've done over the years in terms of relational databases and uh, programming and security systems and governance systems that I've gotten to be a very detailed expert on, you know, those things lasted two years and they're basically gone. And so we have to understand that any kind of training we take is going to have to be followed on by additional training and more training and more training. And it's going to be a continuously improving version of yourself in terms of you're always reinventing yourself for whatever technology is gonna show up. Uh, understand that you need a rounded training plan. And so we just talked forever about the fact that people have to have a holistic uh, understanding of what architecture is, how it relates to the business, how you deal with data security, governance, all those sorts of things. And so, as we mentioned, if you're a, if you're a, a multi-cloud expert, a multi-cloud SME, there's absolutely nothing that you shouldn't know a little bit of in the business. And so to do that, you need a round of training plan to make that happening. So that means you need to understand networking and a lot of things that people don't think they need to understand, hardware, software, how it interacts one to another, data center operations. It's weird how many things come on my radar screen um, and I probably haven't dealt with in you know 20 years that are showing up now that we're dealing with multi-cloud. Um, and make sure you understand what you're worth. I mean, I think a lot of people are being underpaid because they're not you know, asking for the, the money that they should be deserving of the market. And so the reality is if you work for a consulting company, you're gonna get paid a bit more than if you're working for a hardware company. But the uh, ultimately, what do I deserve in my paycheck as to someone at my skill level at this area in time and po point in the marketplace? And the ability to kind of price yourself is something that I like to see people do. I don't you know how many times I've hired people over the years you know, they've given me what they're looking for and they're really kind of worth twenty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 more. And we ended up paying them more, but it's kind of disappointing they didn't ask up front. And I think that a lot of people are leaving money on the table. A lot, most employers aren't going to be as nice as me. They're going to go ahead and pay the discounted price and, you know, hope you don't figure it out. Yeah, it's so true. It's so true. Well, great top tips there, Dave. Thank you so much. And thanks for being part of the uh, first show of 2019, I believe. 
It's always a pleasure, man. Let's have a good year. Absolutely. And thanks for watching, everyone. We really hope you enjoyed watching this week's show. You can get David on Twitter, which is at David Linthicum. Uh, I'm on Twitter at Nelson underscore Hilliard. All the links are in the description box below because we're on Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter, obviously, and LinkedIn. So come and connect with us there as well. Remember to like, subscribe to the channel, uh, which is really important so we get to build this community of, of cloud tech supporters and things like that. So uh, it's really great to get your support. We get some great feedback on the shows. We've got some really cool special special guests coming up and some great shows coming up as well, which is really exciting. Uh, we've also got links in the description box to our blogs as well, where David writes some exclusive blogs for us, which we're, we're very privileged to have. So come and read those. They're fantastic. And uh, yeah, thanks for being part of this whole cloud tech journey that we're on at the moment. Thanks for watching and until next week.